but the last stage was a circuit race around San Flor, 34 kilometers long, four laps of the circuit for the men. And as you can see by the profile, a massive climb in the middle of the lap. And after nine stages, all of the riders very, very tired. And only 93 starting this stage. 27 riders dropped out over the preceding eight days. And as you'd expect on the last stage, most of the riders tried to win it. Along with perhaps the first and the last... Well, sorry, along with perhaps the first, the most important stage to win. People tend to remember these. But it was defending champion Bart Brent Jens, the winner of the first stage, who was trying to do likewise on the ninth, trying to win that one. He'd opened up a gap of 13 seconds on the main peloton by the time they crossed one of the river crossings. But Bart Brent Jens, unfortunately, during the mountain bike Tour de France, nowhere near looking as good as he did in 1996, when he dominated from start to finish, winning two stages in that year. And despite the fact that he won the first stage, even though he did do that, he never looked that strong on that day. And he was caught by the peloton, led by Christophe Dupuy, number 32. He'd been caught by the five-kilometre mark at Sa in saint Fleur and all the rest of the riders together. But it was Christophe Dupuy who made the significant break on this stage. And he built up by the 11-kilometre mark a massive gap of 53 seconds. But he was chased by number 43, Pamel Cherkasov, the two-time stage winner. Winner of stage six and winner of stage eight, the winner, winner of the stage eight time trial. The Diamondback rider, a member of that team, leading the team, the team's classification overall from Sun Nike team, led by Christophe Dupuy and Miguel Martinez. But after one lap, Dupuy still in the lead, 50 seconds over a chasing group. Tour de France, the mountain bike Tour de France blessed with perfect weather throughout the nine stages. The Dominic Arnault, let, followed by Cade Evans, Lenny Christensen, 121 Cyril Bonon, number 43 Chokosov, number 31 Miguel Martinez. They were chasing Martinez's teammate Christophe Tupoué, but unfortunately for second place rider Jean Christophe Savignoni, he was a massive 135 behind that chasing group that included Cadel Evans. That meant that on the road, Evans had regained his second spot overall. But after two laps, Dupuy still held the lead. He'd increased it to 135 over the chase of Dominic Arnaud, number 81, and the main group, including Evans, Cherkasov, Christensen, Cyril Bonon, and Hubert Paluba. Jean-Christophe Samioni, number 91, was still behind Evans. He was 45 seconds behind Evans, so that meant that he was still, he'd lost his second place on the road. To Evans, the Green Espoirs jersey holder. Number 121, Cyril Bonon, leading the chase. But Jean-Christophe Samioni wasn't to give up. He'd measured his race perfectly. Number one, Bart Brent Jens was looking more and more tired on the stage, being passed by Miguel Martinez, number 31, the Sun Nike rider. But at the bell, Christophe Dupuy was 155 in front of the lone chaser, Cyril Bonnel, number 121, the French national champion, the Haute Loire Cannondale rider, recently or signed up at the beginning of 1997 to the Cannondale team. Number 83 was chasing hard, as was Jean-Christophe Savignoni, who clawed back the difference on Cade Levens, number 41, and was with him at this stage. So the three main protagonists on the mountain bike, Tour de France, Cade Levens, the Diamondback rider, Jean-Christophe Savignoni, the look rider, and Lenny Christensen, the overall leader and giant rider, all together. But Jean-Christophe Savignoni was now being chased by Peter Van Danabile, Lenny Christensen, number 13, and Cade Levens, number 41. 
Van der Nabile, a winner of three stages of the Tour de France in the first edition in 1995. But Dupuy was to come across the line in first spot, despite that chase group. And he said that he'd been out of shape for a month and a half during the uh, Grundig World Cup. And he just had one bad day on this tour, which was a pity, but uh, he said he was really the best during the week. I'm not quite sure, I'm not so sure of that. But Cyril Bonon came home in second spot. And, and for John Christophe Savignoni, it was a good race for him on this stage. He actually clawed back the time difference and came home with Cade Levens. And he said that the tour was wonderful. I hope the audience appreciated it. I cal calculated this stage, stage to the maximum. And I didn't panic, I just rode my own race. I wasn't really worried. I wanted to enjoy it. But Lenny Christensen was to come home with Cade Levens. After being honest, maybe you will be the sportsman of the to season. To win overall. <laughs> so the overall standings at the end of the 97 Tour de France. Christensen first, Savignoni in second, K. Levens in third, Christophe Dupuy the winner of the last stage in fourth. But the three main riders of the 1997 Tour de France on the podium, Lenny Christensen in purple, K. Levens in green, and Jean-Christophe Savignoni holding his baby, the new baby, Titoin. Yes, a terrific ride there by Lenny Christensen, proving you've got to be consistent in this type of racing. But well done also to Cadell Evans, his growing reputation as a leading world mountain bike rider, certainly intact. And it'll keep him in good stead for next month's World Championships in Switzerland. Evans finished third, missing out by 31 seconds behind Jean-Christophe Savignoni. And let's take the performances of the other Aussies. Paul Rowney finished 14th overall. Josh Fleming next best in 41st, followed by Brent Tanzen in 44th position. Gary Payne was 52nd, and Matt Devlin moved up to 81st place. The Australian team finished the 10-day event in 12th position, and well done to them.